Tonight on The Profit, I go inside Worldwide Trailers, a custom trailer manufacturer in Tampa, Florida. And so is this essentially a commercial kitchen? Yep. That's your yes. serving area. Co-owners struggle to work together after their nasty breakup. You're a pathological liar is the way I look at it. I can't work with you. I have my work cut out for me. For me, it's all about business. None of it should have been in anything except for business. I need to put the controls in place. My name isn't going on this if it looks like this. There's no way. We do track our money. But no, you don't track your money. And make sure these bitter rivals can work together. Yeah, you got that right. My name is Marcus Limonis. I fix failing businesses. I don't know how you run your business this way. I make tough decisions. I can tell you for damn sure, you're replaceable. Really? I back them up with my own cash. There's your check. It's not always pretty. Everybody's working hard, not just you. But this is business. It's just going to try to stop you in your tracks. You'll never stop me in my tracks. I do it to save jobs, and I do it to make money. This okay. is The Profit. <laughs> Worldwide Trailers designs, builds, and sells concession trailers, mostly to food vendors. Tom Etheridge and Nancy Pappas started the company in 2001 and took it from a backyard startup to a multi-million dollar business. You got 50%, I got 50%. Tom and Nancy were a couple, and although their relationship came to an abrupt end three years ago, they have continued to work together. Working with Nancy is difficult. Nancy, you never agree with anything I say anyway, so what's the point? I not only run the company, but I also have to watch my back on a regular basis. Why would you do this and not tell me? Worldwide Trailers brings in $4 million in revenue but their profits have flatlined around $400,000. From my experience in this industry, worldwide trailers should be making way more than 10% profit. I want to see some doubling in our numbers, tripling in our numbers. We invested a lot of money, almost half a million dollars, to get our factory open. That was our life savings. It was a huge risk for us. With almost 20 employees, there's a lot at stake. I want to keep this job. We have a lot of people that depend on us, so that's why I work hard every day. This business means everything to me. I know there's a huge market for what Tom and Nancy make. If I can grow this company as big as I know it can be, I stand to make millions. Hi, I'm Marcus. I'm Eva. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. What do you do here? What everybody needs me to do. I'm the office assistant. Well, where will I find Tom and Nancy? In the back. This is where everything takes place. They outfit here. Walking into the Worldwide Trailer Tampa facility, I'm surprised at how small the whole plant is. There's not a lot of people here. And for a company that puts out hundreds of trailers a year, I'm not sure where everything is. And so are they made here, too? No. They're actually built from steam up in our Georgia factory, and then they're delivered down here. So they pretty much come to us like an empty house, and we install everything here. The fact that they have split this manufacturing into two facilities is a very big issue. I know it's costing them money. Well, I'll find my way. It's just on the way back there. I'll yeah. find my way. Nice meeting nice you. Nice meeting you. Thank Take you. care. How you doing? I'm Marcus. Nice to meet you, Rick. You build all this? I install it and put it together. What happens if a trailer comes here damaged? If it's something that I can fix here, then I'll take care of it. If not, it'll go back to the factory. That seems costly to bring it back and forth. I mean, gas prices these days. Anytime you run manufacturing out of two separate spaces, you're going to have additional labor costs. And then what about the cost of moving the product back and forth? It'd be like manufacturing a car in Detroit and then towing it to Ann Arbor to put the tires on. All right, well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Hi, Marcus. How, how are, are you? you? Nice to Pappas. meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, Marcus. Tom Etheridge. Nice Tom, to meet how you. How are you? Good. This is the headquarters for Worldwide Trailer? This is yep. the headquarters. Did a little research. The product you guys make is good. Yeah. How much, how much revenue will your company do? We did $4 million last year. And so how much of that actually fell to the bottom line? How much did you make? Maybe 400000 How many will you make a year? About 125 trailers a year. Now, keep in mind, not all trailers are food trailers. Even though that's what we specialize in, we'll build emergency command post trailers. We've built mortuary trailers, casket trailers. We're pretty good at what we do, Marcus. We've been doing it for a long time. Who's that? That's Kita. That's Kita. That's the shop dog. Yeah. Whose dog is that? Mine. It's my dog. 
No. No, that's my dog. Are your dog his dog? No, it's mine. Oh, it used to be my dog. No, it was ours, and she stays with me. Oh. We were a couple for 20 years, but we're not together for the last three. How is it working together, and is that odd? I don't really have any issues as long as nobody gets in my way. I'll make sure I stay out of your way. I was hoping I could get a tour of the place. Do you guys want to give me a tour? Sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so is this essentially a commercial kitchen? Yes. So I can cook like a... You can bake. Oh, this is like an oven in your house. Yep. OK. French fries. Yes. Is this the pass-through window for? That's your yes. serving area. And so I'd come up, order my order one window, pick up in another window? Yep. And so what does something like this cost? Close to 50000 retail. And so what is the cost to make something like this? You know, that's a good question. I could figure it out in my head real quick, but I need a piece of paper and a pen, but. I thought you said your head. Well, if I had a piece of paper and a pen. Uh, this, this one, though, I do have to say is because we have a lot of specialty things. $10,000? It'd be under 20, Marcus. Tom and Nancy don't know what it costs to make a trailer. They don't know their numbers. They're not sure how much money they make. I mean, this is a classic case of doing well in spite of yourself. So Nancy, why do you make them in two different places? Because everybody who works at the factory in Georgia has been doing it for 20 years plus. So they're very good at what they do. The reason we have an office down here is because he and I are here. So we wanted the finished product to be here to see the end result. So how much efficiency can be improved if you made everything in one place? We're paying two mortgage payments. That's like 2,300 bucks a month. And yeah. also, we, every, every trailer that gets built there has to be transported here. 60 grand is what we're paying in a year to transport them just down here. To me, efficiency equals margin. Margin equals profit. Profit equals another BMW, right? Why not? Would you move? N absolutely not. <laughs> I live on the beach. I can't move. <laughs> By operating two locations hundreds of miles apart, they are eating into the profits. Real estate expenses, around $50,000, including the mortgage payment. Transportation costs, around $60,000. The damage that happens when we transport things, around $50,000. Maintenance, taxes, utilities, another $50,000. At a minimum, we can save $210,000 a year. You guys have a successful business here. It does $4 million a year. You didn't just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and trip into $4 million. Right. You've done very well. But I mean, I can see why you guys called me. Um, who called you? We, you all called us. What's that? You all called us. Oh, you called him? Well, I spoke to them. Oh, you did? Mm hmm Oh, OK. In the first place, that right there, I was never aware of that. So yeah, I'm not happy about this at all. You sending something in, you've been lying all this time, making it look like, oh, they called us and picked us out of the blue and out of 100,000 people and all this kind of stuff. In the meantime, you're sitting there lying every day. Some people don't know any better. So you have to help them help themselves. I don't help. No. Sure do. No, you need help because you're a pathological liar is the way I look at it. What did you say about me? Nothing that everybody okay, don't already well, know. Well, I, I need to see what was said. It's funny how you're more interested I'm in not. application than improving the business. Listen, I have to tell you, but I, but I came to do business. And so for me, it's all about business. That's and so it. That's why none of it should have been in anything except for business. So hopefully that's all that was in it. I, I'm telling you, that's, I wouldn't have come. If I thought it was going to be a circus, I wouldn't have come. That's it, then. We don't have a problem. Nancy, why don't we go outside and talk, OK? All right, let's go. I'm already sensing that these two can't communicate well together. Anytime you're in business with somebody that you have a scorned relationship with, that, that doesn't bode well for the business. I mean, I'll be honest with you. If we didn't have this business, I would never speak to him again. Why don't you buy him out? Because he won't let me. Has he tried to buy you out? No, and we're not in positions to basically buy each other out as far as the amount of money. Right. The thing is, yeah, we were together 20 years. And Tom just made some really bad choices. He starts banging his girl. She just kept working him and working him. He's like, you know, hey, can I <laughs> This took place for about a month before I found out. I knew he was up to something, so 2011, February 6th, I get my out of bed at 5.30, because I'm like, I know 
to do with something. He starts tramping her into my beach house, up in my bedroom, laying in my bed in a spot. I grab her hair, her eyes were like cue balls. She rolled out. Tom turned over, and he's like, Nancy, I punched him so hard. I give him a black eye. And then our $50,000 Viper, which was a 95 with 6,000 miles, ain't never been touched but with white gloves. He moved like a pitchfork, and I wiped out every panel that I could basically get my hands on. Went home, packed my up, and I left. And I ain't never dealt with it since. That was way too much information for me. I don't mind open lines of communication, but man. So what's a guy like you doing being single? I, I already laid it out. I told my sister, I said, oh, he's a great guy. Great guy's always. You don't even know me yet. I could be crazy. I said, oh, he's going to have three kids. No, no kids. Be married. No. Ching, ching. Did that just happen? I came here to do business. I didn't come here for, like, speed dating. Tom and Nancy clearly have leftover issues that are affecting the business. They're going to have to prove to me they can work together as a team. But before I make any investment decisions, I want to go to Waycross, Georgia, and see this manufacturing facility. So is this an entire manufacturing process? This is it here. We build everything from scratch, you know, from the frame up. If you want to take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, what? This trailer, that's a mobile daiquiri trailer. He has his daiquiri machines, and he'll serve out of this side. And so walk me through the process of how it works. We order the steel components. Some of it is sized, some of it we have to cut. But basically, the frames, the first thing we do, the, the main frame is walls come up, then the ceiling goes on. Come on, there you go. This is normally about a three-day process. OK. And then we start doing the uh, interior. We work from the inside out. And how much land do you have here? It's about 10 acres. Why is there just stuff everywhere? You know, we don't want to have axles outside. If we, if we have room to put them inside, they need to be inside. The way Tom and Nancy treat their inventory is very disrespectful. Things outside rusting, axles, metal, wood, they might as well just put a bunch of cash in the middle of the floor and light it on fire. Do you know how much in raw materials you have on the ground at one time? I couldn't tell you right now. You don't inventory it? Four years, we have not done an inventory. I mean, in a manufacturing business, right, you always want to know what your raw materials exactly. are, what your finished exactly. goods are. Because that's really where your working capital is, right? That's right. Well, I have to tell you, just seeing the product that's made, y'all do a good job. Thank you. This we product is sure. nice. Thank you. How many of you guys have been down to the Tampa place? Y'all seen it? Never been down there. Why do they have that facility down there? I have no idea. You guys think you could finish it here if we had the right facility? Oh, oh yeah. We know we could. Yeah. 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 We know we could. Without a doubt. I went out and met all the guys in the shop. A lot of experience, a lot of enthusiasm. To be honest with you, I was very pleased with what I saw in Waycross. I'm going to make a lot of money. You guys want to show me how to weld something, show you how to do your job? Yeah, right. Come on, let's go. <laughs> show me how to do this. All right, so here we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can I do it? Yeah, that'll hold it. You weld it to the table. <laughs> You don't want me to take your job, do you? I don't think I got to worry about that. <laughs> I've seen both facilities now, and I think Worldwide Trailers has a lot going for it. Although there's some real issues between inventory, shipping, and the production process, what I'm really concerned about is the behavior between Tom and Nancy. As long as I can keep them professional, we're going to be OK. If they can remain professional, we're going to make a lot of money here. So when did you start drinking? Oh, I, I've always drank. Not, not 20 years I knew you. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. How are you? Marcus. Hi, good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I met a labor force in Waycross that I was really impressed with their dedication and their effort. And I was impressed by the guys there. They're really good. They're very good. And considering what they have to work with, I think the inefficiency that I found there is bad, but fixable. And if you take good people in a bad process and you can fix the process, then their output can grow dramatically. I want to figure out how to make more money. I mean, I don't spend my time. I'm not a consultant. I don't put money in for fun. I put money in to make money. Right. And if I don't think I can make money, then I don't do it. Communication is a risk that's very obvious to me here. Do you guys think you could work together? Should you be concerned about our relationship? 
I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Absolutely. Do I feel that Nancy and I can come to some sort of uh, terms uh, if, if we develop a, a relationship and a partnership with you? I think we can. Nancy, how about you? If it's business, we don't really have to have a personal relationship. I mean, I do have one thing I will say, though. I will not be willing to hire certain people.